Hi, my name is Brenny, and I'm going to show you how you can use the rich text editor in its learning. It's located in lots of different places, in pages, in the assignments, notes, tests, virtually everywhere. And it's a really awesome feature that you can use to make your learning environment online a little bit more accessible, flexible, and universally designed for your students. So what I'm going to do is first show you how you can use the first part of this tool, the rich content editor, in a content block on its learning. So I'm going to go to a course, and if you're signed into its learning, you should be able to go to one. Your courses tab, select your course from there. And if you're trying to find a past course, you can also get to it from that menu as well. You would just click all courses, and then there's a drop down menu that appears in that page, and you would select archived. So if I'm in my course right now, I'm going to go to resources, and I'm just going to show you how you can start from scratch on this. So the rich text editor is in lots of different places. I'm going to show you what it looks like on a page. That's probably where you would use it the most. So I clicked page from the add button. All right, and this is just my lesson page. So I'm going to add a content block and that's where I can start doing some of my building. And you have some options here, but rich content is what you want because that's where the rich content editor is. And you have more options of what you can put in a rich content block versus some of the others. So here is my rich content editor. Um, I'll first give a title to this content block. And then here is the text editor itself, this toolbar of buttons. So if you were curious about what one of these buttons are, if you hover over it, it will tell you what that button is. So that's pretty helpful in case you were wondering. And there's also a guide that I have linked in this video description that has a screenshot and labels all those different buttons too. So let's say that I want to add my text here. So I would just type if I wanted to change the font and size, I could as well. I have my text. Let's say I want to add a picture there that goes along with this. Picture button is here. Select image. And if I've already added pictures onto its learning before, I could just grab one of the ones here. You can't search. You have to organize them into folders or just leave them there and go through all the different ones that you might have. Um, but if I wanted to upload one, I could do that instead. I would do upload and insert. And I have to find one that's on my device. Or the fast way is sometimes you can just copy and paste a picture in without having to do this whole picture insert button. I'm going to go with this picture. And you can click it and resize it from there. If I want to add some more features, I can do that as well. Uh, you have the ability to record audio, which is pretty amazing. It can really make your resources and your content more accessible. So instead of just having a written goal here, I could have an audio recording of me explaining to that my students. So if I click audio recording, it might act a little funny right now because this screencasting tool is also using my microphone, but I can either upload a recording if I already have one saved that I made somewhere else and saved it on my device. Or if I click record, I would click start recording and then go from there. And it's not letting me do that right now because the screen recording software is using my microphone. But I would click record and after you finish recording, you can listen back to it, you can delete it, or you can click upload and insert and it uploads it into your content block. Same thing here, there is a video button and it shows up here. If I'm ready to start recording, I would click record. It is a countdown. You have to record for at least five seconds. Sorry, make that 10 seconds. You have to record for at least 10 seconds. And that's the same for the microphone tool too. You have to talk for at least 10 seconds before you can stop. But whenever you're finished, you would click stop. And it loads for a second and you get to preview it before it's finalized. And it tells you it's being uploaded. You can give this a name. And you can click save. And it uploads it there and you can resize it and move it around if you need to. If I'm finished with this content block, I would click OK. And then my video and my things will be there. 
The other helpful thing that you can do with content blocks is you can also embed slides and other resources and add links. So the next thing I'm going to do is add another content block here, and I'm going to embed my slideshow that maybe went along with this specific lesson. So if I want to add a link, maybe just link to slides, this is what I can do. I can go and find my slideshow. This is Google Slides presentation, so I'm just going to click the share button and grab my shareable link here. Go back to its learning and highlight it. And then there's a link button that's just above where my text box is. So I'll click that and I'll paste in the link that I copied and I'll click OK. And you know it's linked because it turns blue. And it's really important that in terms of accessibility that we keep our links blue so that it's obvious to the reader that that's a link. It's something for them to click interact with. It's also really helpful if you put a hyperlink text or not just paste in the full URL because that looks really messy. It can be really distracting for some students. Now I gave my link there, but let's say I want to have this embedded here. So students don't even have to leave this course page. They can just go through my slides and see all my other information and resources here instead of a new tab. So if I wanted to have a slideshow be embedded on my learning page, it's a little deceiving because you might think, oh, I hover over these buttons, there's the embed button. I'll just do that. The only thing though is that if you use the embed button, it doesn't actually embed your Google Slides, it just gives you a preview of that slideshow. And that's a Google setting. So there is a workaround for that. And this is typically what I do whenever I embed anything on its learning because I know that this button has worked pretty well for me in the past. So what you're going to do is you're gonna use the source button. If I click source, it's going to make it look a little bit scary here for a second. It's going to look like a bunch of computer jargon and jumbled words. So I'm going to go back over to my presentation. And let's say this is what I want to embed. I'll do file. Do this one instead. File. And I'm going to publish to the web. All right. Publish to the web. And basically what this does is it gives you it gives you an embed code. So you can change some of the settings here to where the slides advance on their own. It can start as soon as the embed player loads. You have the ability to control some of that. I just like to go over to embed. And I always change it to small just so it's a little bit easier for me to resize. You can change some of those if you want. And I'll click publish and it wants to see confirmation, so you click OK. And then you can copy all of this code, which is Control C. You right click, you can copy it that way as well. We'll go back to its learning. And just to show you here, what I done on its learning is I press the source button and it makes it look all kind of computer code scary. Um, and I'm going to paste in what I just copied. So you'll know that you copy and paste the right thing if it starts with iframe. That's the embed box. All right. And I don't just leave it like this. I'll click the source button again. And there we go. There's my slideshow. So I can resize that, move that around if I need to, and I'll click OK. And now my slides are embedded. Other thing to show you is that if you're using the daily lesson page template or you want to link to past lessons so your students have easy access, to other resources, it's really easy to link to them. Um, so what you're going to do is over here is where all of my past lessons and resources are. So this is my daily lesson page. Maybe I want this to link back to a folder of lessons. So I'm gonna copy the URL for this folder of lessons. So I'm gonna right click, copy link address, add content block, And I'm going to use the link button again, click the link, and I'll paste, click OK, and click OK. And there we go. So if I click this link to past lessons, there we go. It opens up all my past lessons. So what you did is you copied, you right click the item that you want to copy in your It's Learning tree and copy link address, and then you paste it there. The other way of doing that is if you could technically copy the URL up here. Um, 
and use that one as well. But I think it's just easier sometimes if you don't go from screen to screen. So those are some of the features within the rich content editor, and you can use those throughout its learning. If you have questions, as always, let us know.